Welcome to Ultimate Orlando Clicks. I'm your host, Kevin. We start this week at Universal. Now, they've got some new turnstile hardware here. These are the fingerprint scanners. They're brand new, and they work much better than the old ones. In fact, better even than Disney's. We're here to look at the Diagon Alley details. Now, we are not going into Diagon Alley. These photos were taken um, during the prior weekend when there wasn't anything open to the public. They had been doing some previews and letting some uh, team members ride the attractions. Uh, Gringotts has been giving them some headaches, and so they weren't really doing soft openings or technical rehearsals, as they call them, uh, at Universal. Um, but those have started now, so by the time you're listening to this, the soft openings, the technical rehearsals have started. They've opened the train as I record this, and probably Gringotts will open either today or sometime this week. Now, obviously, these photos are just being taken around the outside of the London area. This is uh, the sort of generic area before you go into Diagon Alley, and these brick walls are how you get into Diagon Alley itself. You see team members going in on this particular day. The night bus has this dangling head you know from the movies and perhaps the book as well. Lots of details in the London area, so they've really kind of gone all out with Disney-level theming, meet and greet as well, the stand guy from outside the night bus. Uh, and the whole area just looks convincing, uh, as Universal these days has been doing more and more of in terms of getting the details right. Now this is that snack stand right on the other side of the London area, and that wasn't open uh, for me to investigate any of these, but those are the prices for you to see. The Jaws area had previously had this uh, bathroom, but it was white, and they repainted it uh, brown to match the London area, and put up a berm to hide some of the... Uh, spires you could see from Diagon Alley in the back there. Now you can't see anything from Diagon Alley now over the tops of the London facades, and that's by design. Uh, you can't see, for instance, this uh, great big dragon that's inside, although you can see it from across the lake. Now from here we're going out to City Walk to Antojitos, that's this uh, Mexican restaurant on the side here, and looking at this new creation, it is, as you can see, um, just a little stand selling margaritas and mixed drinks, and cocktails for 9 to 12 dollars. Across the way from that is the Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Not open in this picture, but is open uh, as you're listening to this, because today is the first day of soft openings. Now, what I'm, one of the things I enjoyed about this is that it's got a kind of a baseball theme to it, which I thought was appropriate given the hot dog uh, nature of what it is they serve. What was open uh, on the day we visited last weekend, not this area, the construction, that's for sushi, but Vivo is open. This is an Italian restaurant that serves pasta. And it's got uh, this kind of busy iron decor on the inside, uh, but it's the food, of course, that counts. And you can see that they have good pizzas, um, and their uh, their vasi came highly recommended. These are the mason jars with various uh, things in them, the appetizers. Really, a lot of good stuff um, uh, came from this menu, and I'll show you a couple of close-ups uh, of what the main entrees cost as well as what the pastas cost. And everything is made fresh uh, and very authentically. So we really had a, a good time in this restaurant. And we've even been back a couple of times since going the first time uh, on our first visit. This is what the Pomodoro looks like. It's enough food, certainly. Uh, very fresh, one of the best plates of pasta my wife says she's ever tried. Uh, the Misty Salad, um, crunchy and unique bitter vegetables in some cases. And the Antipasto, and I really like the pickled vegetables, actually. Get that again just for the pickled vegetables. A couple of extra rooms in Vivo in the back there, and then the bar up at the front where you can order from the full menu as well if you don't have um, time to wait for a regular chair. Now over by the NASCAR restaurant, you'll find these two new eateries, Menchie's and the Red Box. Menchie's first is frozen yogurt, as you can see, and you're probably familiar with the concept, if you're, especially if you're from Central Florida. And they do have the Dole Pineapple Sorbet, very similar to what you might find at the Magic Kingdom, actually. Breadbox wasn't open um, when these pictures were taken, but is soft opened now. And you can see that they have uh, desserts, minor treats, and salads. But mostly they specialize in this sort of stuff, the sandwiches and the soups. So the sandwiches are advertised as grilled cheese, but they're obviously much more than just grilled cheese. And it's not just American cheese, of course, either. From here, we're switching over to Legoland in Winter Haven. This is the Legoland parking lot, and in the background, the construction you're seeing there is the Legoland Hotel. So that's what this walled-off area is for at the front of the park. And they're showing you a concept art of what the hotel will look like when it's finished, as well as what one of the rooms will look like um, when it is finished and ready to open. Inside the park, still in that front zone, this was new to me. It's called Art Photos, and it's obviously a photo booth where you take a picture and pay an upcharge to get your own copy. These misters in Miniland struck my eye as new, though possibly I'm mistaken about that one. I haven't been to Legoland quite as often as the other parks. 
It's been more than a year since I visited, so the Lego Movie presence wasn't really there the last time I visited. Uh, and so you can see some of the meet and greet characters, Emmett and Wild style here, Wild side here for you to uh, take photos with. And this just around the corner from there, uh, next to the Mindstorms facility, that's what this is, uh, is a renewable energy project from uh, Tico, which does uh, energy locally in Florida. It's got these solar panels at the bottom that power the globe spinning around. It's a Lego globe. Kind of a neat effect, actually. World of Chima is new since I've been back, and this is a, a little sub-zone, sub-land all done to itself with really only one attraction. It's got this splash pad for kids, and that's an interesting thing for them to run around in. This arena where you can take these zip toys and, and cars, basically, and, and shove them through those arcs at the end. And then the main attraction here, the Quest for Chi. You can see that the Quest for Chi has uh, got a wait sign out front, but it doesn't usually have that big of a wait because it's a water soaking attraction. It's the river battle attraction, I think is a generic name for this kind of ride. And as you can see, it takes you around slowly through this track and you get wet from things on the side. You look at the Lego creations off on the side from there. You sit down, meanwhile, behind these cannons and you're trying to fire the cannons at the people on the side who have their own cannons. So it's a river battle is what that, that's what that concept comes from. And then the water features on the side often get you wet even without the other people. So you really come off this ride completely drenched if you go on it. I did not take the camera on the ride. These pictures are all taken from the sidelines. Um, and I'm, connect, I'm going over on the side here. Connect the Chi is this game the kids can play. Uh, you've got this bathroom as well as a shop around the side from there. Uh, and then you can get some uh, different angles of other scenes you get from the river battle uh, from the front. It goes into the uh, building from here, and I didn't see what was inside the building. I know the loading zone is in there as well. You've got some Lego creatures uh, on the front, all from this World of Chima stuff. I thought it was smart that they had these changing rooms on the exit of the attraction there because people come off completely soaked. Duplo Valley is the other new area for us next to World of Chima, and this is um, a toddler area. It was previously a toddler area as well, but it's been rethemed, it's been redone, it's been rebuilt. They've got this new snack stand, uh, they've got a splash pad for the little toddlers, and they've got this brand new railroad built from scratch. They had little rides here before, little flat surface rides, but this, this way it's done now is more Duplo oriented, um, just more interesting in general. The second ride themed like a train, though obviously this one's not a train. And then the Duplo Farm area with the playground equipment, uh, that's been there for a long time. Previously it was uh, covered but not enclosed, so it wasn't really air conditioned. And so that's where the toddler room is located as well as the actual baby care center for the entire park. And there's the front side of the Duplo Valley expansion. In the big store at the end you find more of the Lego Movie presence. There wasn't much Lego Movie around the park, actually I was a little surprised by that. As well as Legoland specific merchandise. There's a picture frame and then these characters that you're supposed to take pictures with. And then some brick fans sort assorted stuff. That's kind of their motto. Well we're not at the computer that has the um, nostalgia game where in Walt Disney World was this, so we'll be back in a future week with all of that stuff. In the meantime, thank you as always for your attention. We're going to take a couple of weeks off, and then we'll be back with the regular schedule and the regular game, and we will catch you guys at that time.